Nothing kickstarts the day quite like a cold, refreshing glass of orange juice. The taste of pure, liquid sunshine in a bottle. America chugs through over 500 million gallons of the sweet nectar every year, a demand that never slows down, even when the golden fruit aren't in season. But what does it take to keep this tangy goodness flowing all year round? It's a blend of state-of-the-art farming, science, and precision timing far more complex than you might think. From sun-soaked orchards to the final pour, we're uncovering the high-tech juicy journey of OJ, coming up next on Made Vision. The perfect orange juice starts with the perfect climate, and in the U.S. that means Florida and California. Both states offer the right mix of warm sunshine and seasonal rainfall, creating ideal conditions for growing juicy, flavorful oranges. Since the mid-20th century, Florida has dominated as the top orange juice producer in the U.S., but in recent years, its dominance has faded. A combination of hurricanes and a devastating tree disease called citrus greening has severely impacted its crops, leading to a 75% drop in Florida's orange juice production since 2005. As Florida's orchards have struggled, California has taken on a bigger role in the U.S. orange juice industry. But even with its increased output, it can't entirely meet the country's demand on its own. To keep up, many companies now import more oranges than ever, with Brazil leading as the world's top exporter for juice oranges. In fact, most 100% orange juice is actually a blend from both the U.S. and Brazil, something worth checking next time you grab a bottle. Out of the many orange varieties grown worldwide, there are two primarily used in commercial juice production because of their high juice yield and tangy flavor, Valencia and Hamlin. While Valencias are the industry's preferred choice, making up around 70% of juice crops. Many orchards also grow Hamlins alongside them to take advantage of their different harvest cycles and keep juice production steady throughout the year. For instance, Valencias, which bloom in the spring, can take around 12 to 15 months to fully ripen, meaning they aren't harvested until the following year, from March through September, peaking during the summer months. Hamlins, on the other hand, also bloom in the spring but ripen much faster, maturing within seven to eight months and are harvested within the same year, from October through January. While Hamlins have a gentler flavor, their high juice content makes them just as important to the growers when Valencias aren't in season. By alternating between these two varieties, orchards can supply a constant feed of fresh oranges to the juice factories, so that no matter the season, we can enjoy fresh OJ all year round. So how do the growers know when the oranges are perfectly ripe for juicing? They rely on this specialized tool called a refractometer. By squeezing a sample of fresh juice onto the device, they measure its ratio of sugar to water, also called the bricks percentage. For an orange to be ideal for juicing, it must contain at least 10% sugar, delivering just the right amount of natural sweetness and flavor. Now that the oranges are at their ideal sweetness, it's time for the harvest to begin. In some orchards, workers still hand-pick the oranges, gently placing them in bags to maintain their pristine appearance. But with the factory needing millions of oranges every day, a quicker and more efficient system is used for large-scale juice production. Since these oranges are all headed for juicing, minor blemishes aren't that much of a concern. That's where this massive harvester machine takes over. As it moves over the trees, vibrating arms shake the branches, causing ripe oranges to fall onto a conveyor system. From there, they're transferred into this specialized collection vehicle called a GOAT, traveling alongside in the next row. With the ability to harvest up to two tons per minute, 
or over 2 million oranges a day, this machine keeps juice production running at full speed. Now, you might be wondering, why are some of the oranges still green? Surprisingly, their color has nothing to do with ripeness. It all comes down to temperature, not time. Cool nights can trigger the peel to turn orange, while warmer nights can actually turn it green again. But don't be fooled, these green ones are just as ripe and juicy as their bright orange counterparts. As long as they're all full-sized, they're perfectly ready for juicing. Once all the oranges have been harvested, the goat truck hauls them to an open-topped semi-trailer called a gondola, which is strategically placed for easy loading. One by one, the goats arrive and unload their haul into the waiting gondola. This process repeats until the trailer is filled with up to 120,000 oranges. To put that in perspective, that's enough to produce roughly 2,700 gallons of fresh OJ. Once they're filled, semi-trucks transport the oranges to the factory, where the juicing process kicks into high gear. When the trailers arrive at the factory, they're staged in a holding lot, waiting for their turn to be unloaded. Hostler trucks then shuttle the trailers to the unloading area, where they're positioned onto this hydraulic platform. Depending on the factory, the platform either tilts the trailer at a 25-degree side angle, while others use a vertical tilt system, both designed to let gravity handle the unloading. In seconds, all 120,000 oranges cascade onto the conveyor, marking the start of their journey to becoming fresh juice. While the oranges are being unloaded, a trapdoor on the conveyor opens at random, collecting a 40-pound sample for testing. In the on-site lab, technicians analyze each sample for its bricks or sugar-to-water ratio, color, and overall quality to determine its best use later. Oranges with a sugar content above 11.5% are set aside for concentrate, while the rest continue through the process to become single strength, which will later be pasteurized. As the samples undergo testing, the conveyor keeps moving, directing the remaining fruit into this giant holding bin, where they're divided by concentrate or single strength. From the holding bins, the oranges are sent down to this rinsing deck before entering the factory. On the deck, they're sprayed with a water and alkaline solution, then pass over these spinning brushes that scrub away any surface contaminants, making sure they're all pristine before they meet the juicer. Freshly washed, the oranges next enter the pre-sort stage. Diligent inspectors stand alongside these conveyors and toss out any that are smashed, defective, or showing signs of decay. As the approved oranges continue along the conveyor, they encounter a bed of thousands of tiny sharp pins that gently puncture the peels, just enough to release the essential oils contained within. But we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Next, the oranges are sorted by size using a system of rollers that categorize them based on diameter. Even though they're all destined for juice, sorting by size allows each orange to fit perfectly into the matching sized extractor. This maximizes efficiency, reduces waste, and helps squeeze out every last drop of juice. Now it's time to squeeze out the flavor and turn these oranges into liquid gold. The size-sorted oranges are fed into specially designed extractors where each one is carefully cradled into a cup and sliced in half. The halves are then pressed against a twisting cone-shaped reamer that extracts the juice and pulp in one swift motion. If it looks familiar, that's because it works just like a home juicer, only this machine can handle 800 oranges every minute. Keeping up with the massive 500,000 gallons, this factory can make daily. But twist juicing is just one approach. Some factories rely on this metal prong machine to get the job done. With this method, the oranges are dropped onto rows of sharp prongs. Then, a powerful press crushes them downward, forcing the juice to flow through while separating the peel and pulp. The pulp doesn't go to waste, though. Instead, it's collected and stored in these metal drums, 
later to be added back into select juice batches for those who prefer a thicker, more textured drink, just like fresh squeezed oranges. We'll dive into the pulp reworking soon, but for now, you might be wondering, what happens to all those peels? The now empty peels fall into a rotating auger mill that grind them into a fibrous, shredded mix. After that, the processed peels are loaded onto trucks and sent out to be used as cattle feed. Earlier in the process, we saw how thousands of tiny pins punctured the orange peels, releasing their natural oils. That oil, along with additional extracts from the ground-up peels, are collected in a giant vat. This oil water emulsion is then sent to a high-speed centrifuge, where it's rapidly spun to separate the pure oil from the water. This continues until the oil reaches at least 99% purity. The result is pure orange essential oil, a highly versatile product that can be used in cosmetics, aromatherapy, food flavoring, and much more. As for the orange juice itself, it follows one of two paths, concentrate or single strength. For concentrate, the juice is sent through evaporators that remove about 80% of its water content, leaving behind a highly concentrated form. This is then frozen, creating the familiar ice tubes of juice you might see in grocery store freezers. For single strength, the juice must undergo flash pasteurization to keep it safe and fresh while it awaits bottling. First, it's heated to 185 degrees Fahrenheit to kill bacteria before rapidly cooling it to 35 degrees to maintain its quality. Since there are no additives, it will be labeled as 100% orange juice. Once pasteurized, the juice is stored in these massive 1 million gallon refrigerated tanks, where it can stay fresh for up to two years with minimal flavor degradation. Fun fact, the flash pasteurization method was developed in the 1950s by Tropicana's founder, Anthony Rossi, and his team of scientists. Prior to that, almost all commercially available orange juice in the U.S came from concentrate. Before the juice reaches the bottling stage, multiple samples are taken from the 1 million gallon storage tanks and sent to the lab, so only the highest quality product makes it to consumers. In the lab, each sample undergoes rigorous testing, where experts analyze acidity, sugar or bricks level, aroma, color, and most importantly, taste. Additionally, the pulp quality is also examined before being blended back into select batches in the next stage. Now, it's time to reintroduce the previously extracted pulp back into the juice before bottling. The pulp barrels are sent to a rework tank, where the pulp and juice are thoroughly blended to create a smooth, uniform consistency. Since everyone has different preferences, the juice is separated into batches with varying pulp levels, ranging from some pulp to lots of pulp. And for those who prefer their OJ Silky Smooth, a pulp-free batch is made too. Which pulp level do you prefer? Let everyone know in the comments. After months of ripening under the sun, the oranges have been squeezed, tested, and perfected. Now the juice is ready for its final step, bottling and making its way to your glass. First, infrared light heats these plastic preforms, softening them for shaping. Then, a blow molding machine rapidly expands them into 14 ounce bottles. The newly shaped bottles then go through a final rinse cycle, where a spraying machine thoroughly cleans them removing any potential residues or contaminants before they're filled. The filling process happens in stages. First, a small amount of the flash pasteurized juice is poured into the bottles at 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, the rest of the bottle is filled to prevent foaming. A built-in scale on the neck holder automatically checks the weight, preventing overfilling. Once the bottles are filled, the conveyor takes them to a machine that applies a bottle cap in the blink of an eye. Each bottle is now scanned using high-speed cameras and UV light, allowing the system to instantly identify leaks, loose caps, or irregular bottles. 
Then they pass through a machine that turns the bottles of still hot OJ on their side. This allows the liquid to sterilize the neck area and inner cap thoroughly. After sterilization, the bottles move through a cooling station where spray nozzles gently bring them down to room temperature. Now at the perfect temperature, the bottles move to the labeling station where they receive their final touch. A label showcasing the brand, product details, and nutritional information. After each bottle is labeled, they are grouped into packs and sent through a shrink tunnel. Here, they're tightly wrapped together, creating compact packages that are easy to handle, stack, and transport. The shrink-wrapped packs are then stacked onto pallets, forming neat, transport-ready stacks. To keep everything secure, robotic arms wrap the pallets in another layer of cellophane, ensuring stability for easy handling during shipping and unloading. Finally, the freshly bottled orange juice is loaded onto refrigerated trucks, one pallet at a time, making sure they stay cool and fresh on its journey to store shelves. Soon it'll be ready to bring a burst of sunshine to breakfast tables everywhere. Whether you prefer it smooth, packed with pulp, fresh, or from concentrate, every glass of OJ carries the story of its journey, from orchard to table. It's no surprise that it remains the undisputed king of breakfast drinks. Thanks for watching Made Vision. We'll see you next time.